Bro! What did they cook? Who let them cook? What the hell? What the hell, dude? There's just no way. Can I just... Bro. I'm going through all the stages of grief right now. Just trying to process what the fuck I just heard. There's no way. There's no way. There's no way they spent half an hour talking about Star Wars just to come with this for 10 minutes. There's no way they did that. There's no way they did that. First and foremost, there's no way that they literally straight face say it with your chest. Walked up and had us listen to like 40 minutes of Star Watch bullshit. And then they like, let's head over to Aaron and Jared. And then they were like, in 15 minutes, they killed everything that Overwatch 2 PvP was supposed to be. PvE. They literally like, in 15 minutes, they were like, yeah, by the way, everything we said, not coming. Sorry, guys. Peace out. Hope you're excited. Go play Star Watch. See you later. Like, what? What? There's no way. There's no way. There's no way they just did that. I can't even. I can't even understand that they thought this was the way to deliver it. There's no way I thought that this. They thought that this was the way to deliver it. I like that. I, I'm just like over that part. I'm just actually shocked that they thought this was like, bro. Can't, bro. Like who? Who approved this? Who was like, this is the way to do it. This is the way that we're gonna deliver that essentially. The PvE we told you guys was coming is not coming. You know what the usual strategy is like? The usual strategy is if we're going to deliver some bad news, deliver some really good news to start with. You know, like just be like, hey guys, I know I'm about to slap your mother, but here's a chocolate cake first and foremost. Right? Like, and you're like, and so you're so busy, you're like, hmm, this chocolate cake is good. Why are you hitting my mother? Like, you know, that's, that's, that's the like mitigating factor where you're like, this is so fucking good though. You don't drop, like, the worst news that they have dropped for, I don't know, ever? Like, they, they've, they've, this is, is there, has we have ever had worse news than this? And the way they prefaced it was to spend 40 minutes boring us with shit we didn't even hear. Like, let's be real, everybody watching that was not watching that, they were all... Looking at the roadmap, trying to interpret the hieroglyphics that were presented to them right here. I was probably doing what I was doing. In ear, in in one ear, out one ear. Barely listening. And then they're like, by the way, yeah, it ain't coming. Peace out. Bro, like, I'm so glad we were already pivoting away from Overwatch, dude. I'm so glad that we were already, like, unhappy with Overwatch. Because, like... Forget about their mismanagement of their community, of their systems. What are they doing? Like, what are they actually doing? Guys, like, somebody answer to me. What are they actually doing? Like, I I'm gonna be, like, s somewhere considerate to the fact that, like, I'm sure Bobby Kotick is shafting them, right? I am sure that Bobby is... Like, you know, just the Activision hierarchy is, like, relentless spanner in the works, right? Just relentlessly chucking shit, making it harder for them, changing what they want, like, changing what they gotta do. Yo, appreciate that, Emily. Um, I'm sure he's making shit hard. But, like, what have we been doing? I, I don't even understand what have we been doing. Because we stopped, guys, remember, we stopped updating this game for, like, two years. Like, two plus years, probably like three in total, to make Overwatch 2 PvE, right? That was the whole implicit promise, was, uh, hey guys, we're gonna deliver an awesome PvE campaign, we're gonna reinvent the sequel, we're gonna give you so much replayability, it's gonna be awesome, you're gonna love it. And we were like, alright. We're not fans of not getting content, but hey, at the end of the light of the tunnel, uh, you know, the light at the end of the tunnel is some PvE, is some, some good, good shit. 
And then we get early access Overwatch 2, right? They're like, okay, in October 4th, here's some early access PvP. Because, you know, we know you guys are waiting for the PvE. We don't want to starve you forever. Reasonable. Appreciate that. Thank you, developers. You want to give us a little something while you can. And they're like, here's PvE. And everyone was like, it's Overwatch 1.5. It's just like a, an updated, you know, engine. The graphics look a little bit different. Although a little bit, you know, the UI looks a little bit stripped down and bare. A little bit worse, people said. Most people said, well, actually, maybe this is in uh, advance of an Overwatch mobile. So that's why they are, you know, decluttering the visuals, making it look a bit more simplified so that, you know, it helps with screen clutter, but also helps with any future, you know, transitions to, to mobile gaming. And everyone's like, oh, okay, it's 1.5. We got a couple new heroes and like this kind of bad new game mode. But it's all because they're spending their time working on the PvE, right? They're spending their time working on the PvE. So, okay, we'll cut them some slack. Now, now, they come out with their chest. And they're like, yeah, you know, we just, we, we ain't got, we got shit. We got nothing. We ain't got shit. We got jack shit. We got less than shit. We're going to give you guys some, some vague, like, it's you know the saddest part is how they phrased it they weren't even like yeah we're gonna give you a pv you know a dedicated pve uh section they were like our pve is now co-op story events co-op story events guys it's not even they didn't even say we got like a full pve campaign stylus says fuck you guys i played to watch two pve years ago Stylosa, they, they, what they, what you played is probably literally what they still have. Is now where I'm thinking. I'm like, they probably literally have what they play. Like they gave Stylosa, and they're like, here you go, because they love being like old content is back. You should be excited, right? Which is what we have. On fire is back, guys. Old favorite game modes returning. They said story events, not even campaign missions like replay like they were like now nah, we're done with the talent trees that i think that all went down the drain and they were just like story events you know how loose and like underwhelming undercooked shit that is a story event is like lover watch like that is lover watch like a story event is like the fucking star watch that we just played which it barely classifies as an event, let alone a story event. It's like 15 minutes of content. Yeah, Stylos is like, I'm the only person ever who's going to have to play with, with talent trees. None of you guys ever will. There's, You know what's happened, guys? You know what's happened. And don't worry, I'm cooking on the podcast. We'll podcast tonight. Don't worry, we're cooking. There's just no way that they literally like story events. Co-op story events is what we're down to. We went... Guys, 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 guys. We went from redefining the sequel to barely fucking a co-op event. We barely redefined what the fucking game even was, let alone redefining the sequel. We were going to reinvent what sequels were supposed to be. And we went from that to barely even moving the needle on our own game. We didn't even change our own game. We just made it. We just took a player away. And now you play archives every other month. That's what we got at the end of it. That was that. That's the conclusion from redefining the sequel to like, guys, I don't even know what Overwatch is. We didn't even define Overwatch. You know what? They're right. They're right. They have redefined the sequel. Never in the history of gaming has one sequel to a game as good as Overwatch 1 been this bad. I think there's game developers out there stunned at the incredible achievement of taking, as Samido loves to say, the only FPS game to have won Game of the Year in the last like 15 years to take it and redefine it to be bad. That is an achievement right there. That is impressive. That is impressive game management. You really redefined the sequel, guys. You really redefined it. No one, no one from now on until the end of time, game developers everywhere will be able to be like, hey man, should we, uh, 
Should we make a sequel to our game? But what if it's bad, Jim Bob? What if our sequel is bad? Would it not, like, redefine and reset the standards of what a sequel could be? It's alright, Kate. At least it won't be Overwatch 2. At least it won't be as bad as the sequel that Overwatch 2 made. I think this is the reason Overwatch, why, why Jeff left. I mean, clearly some fuckery is going on, dude. Clearly something is going on. I don't know why Jeff left. And there could be many reasons. We've speculated over many reasons. Maybe it was the breast milk. Maybe it was the PvE free to play. Right? It's like the, the live service free to play. Maybe it was just the expectations of Activision Blizzard, right? Maybe it was like, uh, they just kept piling on the burden. They were like, you better be able to deliver this thing, uh, to us. It could have been all of those, could have been none of those, but like clearly some fuckery has taken place. Avril is desperately trying to make sense of this. I don't have sense of this, Avril. It doesn't make any sense. Honestly, like, I, I hate to be one of those people who's like, what were they doing? And like, you know, use the word incompetence because that's really harsh. And I don't know what's going on in there. I don't know what, like, they're dealing with. At this point, though, can anyone say any word other than incompetence? Can, can, can even the developers with a straight face come out and say that what has happened is anything short of incompetence. Like, is this just really terrible game management? Like, straight up. Like, what else can we, how else can we describe what has happened? We should be happy like Counter-Strike players were over the moon about CS2 having new smokes and uh, that's about it. I mean, I know you talked about that example last time, but like, again, at least Counter-Strike is a game that people are still enjoying, testified by the concurrent player base. Overwatch 2 is a game that people are barely tolerating as they save hope for PvE, which is now going to be co-op events. Co-op story events, guys. Like, no, but I'm genuinely asking, like, even the most optimistic hopium guy in chat, whoever you are, how would you describe this? How would you describe, like, in any positive way, how could you possibly sum up the last two, three years of Overwatch management and call it anything but, like, just incompetent at this point? It went from redefining the sequel to mirror making the same story stuff people make in the workshop. Literally, the Halloween event that Lemon Kiwi, Leg Day, and I played in Overwatch 1, made in the workshop, was better than Star Watch. This is a painful update, but no hero trees are a huge task to add for every hero, specifically with, 18, with new heroes every 18 weeks. I mean, I don't disagree, but maybe, maybe that's something they should have thought about if they weren't willing to deliver on it. Just maybe. Like, maybe someone could have raised that and been like, you know, guys, I don't know if we can do three fleshed out talent trees for every hero, especially when we plan to start releasing heroes again. Can we do it? Nah. Let's, let's just like do it in a different way. The talent trees was the whole thing they sold in their PvE announcement. Like, what more did we really even get? We got... Hey guys, we're going to do like an Overwatch story campaign and you're going to like, you know, you're going to get to play with the characters and live in their world and it's going to be really replayable. How is it going to be really replayable, Blizzard? Well, we're going to give you talent trees. How do you feel about, you know, Reinhardt Firestrike freezing everyone now and, and Soldier's Healing Station running with him? It's going to be really fun and really wacky and I hope you guys enjoy it. And now we don't have that, so what do we have? Like, what do we have? For real Z's, what do we have? I don't, I don't know what now, guys. If I was to think about the positive, here's the positive. The positive is... Now, we're getting something. But that is, it's so hard to be positive. They could have kept count trees, but just massively scaled back. Like, instead of binning it, they could have just made it 10 to 15 levels instead of 30 per hero, then later expanded with updates. Exactly. Like, again... I, okay, I get that... 
making talent trees for new heroes is tough. What about the 30 heroes that we already had? What happened to them? Did they just not get talent trees? Like, either we made talent trees for those heroes and we've now decided to scrap them. Or, the more likely truth, they didn't even have talent trees for those guys. Right? Because there's no way. There's no way that they're telling me that they made a 30 level talent tree for 30 heroes and decided to just like ditch it. There's no way. Because they were afraid of like, well, when we release a, he a new hero every, you know, four months, that'll be too much. Because you can just be like, the new hero will have a talent tree later, right? Like, for example, Hearthstone Battlegrounds just released uh, a new expansion, right? And what's fun about that game is that they, they often reinvent essentially how the game is played, right? They're like... One season, they'll add a buddy. So it's like, it's like an addition. It like changes up how you play, right? You have, for those unfamiliar, it's an auto battler. You have a hero that you pick at the start of the game out of an option of either four if you have the premium battle pass or just two if you're a free play pleb like me. The hero has a unique power that lets you play the game, you know, in a different way. And then you buy minions and there's like seven tribes, seven types of minions you can choose or seven or eight, something like that. And, you know, you pick one and like in every game, Two or three of them are like out of the rotation and it's just like five in the rotation. So it's like every game is different in that sense already, right? One game you have these minions in rotation, one game you don't. Then you have your hero power to change things up. And then every season or so often, they're just like, here's a new system. We added a buddy. So like that completely changes how your hero plays. Here's this where uh, like they just redid all the, the tries basically. They redid all the things and Rather, pretty clearly, they probably didn't have everything ready. So they released like six or seven of the tribes and they were like two or three of them were like coming later. Which is totally fine because you get to play the new tribes now. Right? You get to play the new tribes now. And that's still lots of fun, lots of fresh content. And then like in a week, they release the next tribe. And there's still two tribes that are like coming later. And that's great because like, oh, this week I got a new thing to play around with. Oh, that's fun. And it kind of changes how I interact with the previous tribes as well. Okay, okay, this is fun. And like, they could have done that with the talent trees if they had done a lot of them. The truth is, I don't think they've done a lot of them.